Welcome to Spiritual Minefield. Today we're going to look at what is the marriage of the Lamb. Stay tuned. All right, so we're going to start in Revelation chapter 19, and we're going to talk about the marriage of the Lamb. Just in case some people are confused, what is the marriage of the Lamb? This is not in reference to something physical, where Jesus is physically marrying a woman or anything like that. But this is a scene when Jesus and all the saints from all time are going to come together to have the Lord's Supper or the banquet, so that all the saints will be with Jesus for all eternity. So this is a celebration when the world is coming to an end and all the saints are going to be with Jesus forever in the kingdom of heaven. And we will always be with him. So this is a celebration of that union, an eternal one. So let's look at several passages that talks about the banquet or the marriage of the Lamb, which they both mean the same thing. So we're going to look here first in Revelation chapter 19. And we're going to start in verse 6. And it says, And I heard a sound like the roar of a great multitude, like the rushing of many waters, and like a mighty rumbling of thunder, crying out, Hallelujah! For the Lord our God, the Almighty reigns. Let us rejoice and be glad, and give Him the glory. For the marriage of the Lamb has come, and His bride has made herself ready. She was given clothing of fine linen, bright and pure. For the fine linen she wears is the righteous acts of the saints. So the clothing that all Christians are going to have on is going to reflect their nature, is going to reflect who they are. They're going to be people whose sins have been cleansed or washed by the blood of the Lamb. That's what's going to reflect. Then the angel told me to write, Blessed are those who are invited to the marriage supper of the Lamb. And he said to me, These are the true words of God. So we see here, that you are blessed if you're invited because that suggests that you have eternal life that suggests that you have the holy spirit and you will be with christ for all eternity you will never end up in hell but you will be with jesus you'll be with the father and the holy spirit is going to be in you for all eternity and with all the saints and all the angels you're going to see everything so now let's go to isaiah chapter 25 and isaiah chapter 25 it, it gives a glimpse of that also so we're going to start in verse 6, and it says, On this mountain the Lord of hosts will prepare a banquet for all the peoples, a feast of aged wine, of choice meat, of finely aged wine. So we see what type of food is going to come with this supper or this banquet. It's going to be choice meat, whatever that type of meat is, and aged, really good wine is going to be presented in this banquet. Verse 7, On this mountain he will swallow up the shroud that enfolds all peoples, the sheet that covers all nations. And we're going to see what this is. He will swallow up death forever. The Lord God will wipe away the tears from every face and remove the disgrace of his people from the whole earth. And in that day it will be said, Surely this is our God. We have waited for him, and he has saved us. This is the Lord for whom we have waited. Let us rejoice and be glad in his salvation. So we're going to see here that all the saints are going to rejoice because we have been waiting for Jesus Christ to save us, to rescue us, to keep us secure, to keep us safe from death, from this world, from corruption, from wickedness, from every evil thing that Satan and his demonic forces bring against us. Once we are in Jesus' presence, no longer are we going to be in that situation will be safe for all eternity because when we're with Jesus we will never be apart from Jesus we will always always be with him okay so now let's look at other passages and we're going to go now to Luke chapter 14 and this is a parable that Jesus gives about the banquet so let's read when one of those reclining with him heard this he said to Jesus blessed is everyone who will eat at the feast in the kingdom of God but Jesus replied a certain man prepared a great banquet and invited many guests. When it was time for the banquet, he sent his servant to tell those who had been invited, Come, for everything is, is now ready. But one after another, they all began to make excuses. The first one said, I have bought a field and I need to go see it. Please excuse me. Another said, I have bought five yoke of oxen and I'm going to try them out. Please excuse me. Still another said, I have married a wife, so I cannot come. 
The servant returned and reported all this to his master. Then the owner of the house became angry and said to his servant, Go out quickly into the streets and alleys of the city and bring in the poor, the crippled, and the blind, and the lame. Sir, the servant replied, What you ordered has been done, and there is still room. So the master told the, his servant, Go out to the highways and the hedges and compel them to come in so that my house will be full. For I tell you, not one of those men who, ha who were invited would taste my banquet. So basically here Jesus is rebuking the Jews or the religious leader at that time because the Jews were invited to the banquet and many of them rejected Jesus Christ. So because they rejected Jesus Christ, they will not participate in the banquet because to participate in the banquet, you have to have Jesus Christ in your heart. You have to be saved. You have to have the Holy Spirit inside of you. Your sins has to be cleansed because sin cannot enter to the kingdom of heaven. So many who are invited refuse to come in because they reject Jesus Christ. See, the problem is this, that this world has hooked many people who know the truth. They hooked them. So for them to leave the world for Jesus is too hard. So they choose this world instead of Jesus. But the problem is that they're going to be in hell when they die and they will not participate in heaven why because if you want to keep this world you cannot have it both ways you cannot be with jesus and with this world you have to choose because this world is against jesus why because satan is the god of this world because satan has corrupted this world and the pleasures of life the pleasures of the flesh is anchored in this world because it satisfies the flesh, meaning the way the flesh gets satisfied is through sin. So you cannot hold on to this world and hold on to Jesus at the same time. That's a contradiction. You cannot do both. Either you give yourself to Jesus 100% or you give to the world 100%. You cannot give 50-50. You got to choose. You cannot keep both. That's impossible. So then many people who know the truth... They know about the Bible, they know about Jesus, they know about the Father, they know about many things like that, the cross. They choose this world over Jesus, so they will not participate in the banquet. They will not participate in the marriage of the Lamb. All right, let's continue uh, with other passages about the banquet. Okay, so this is the same parable in Matthew chapter 22, which we read in, in Luke chapter 14, but it adds a little bit more detail. And we're going to read the extra detail. Instead of reading the whole thing again, we'll read... Just an extra detail. And then it says here, we'll start in verse 10 of Matthew 22. It says, So the servant went out into the streets and gathered everyone they could find, both evil and good. And the wedding hall was filled with guests. But when the king, a.k.a. Jesus, came in to see the guests, he spotted a man who was not dressed in wedding clothes. Friend, he asked, how do you get in here without wedding clothes? But the man was speechless. Then the king told the servants, Tie him hand and foot and throw him into the outer darkness where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth for many are called but few are chosen. So this man here who was found in the banquet hall did not have wedding clothes. Why? Because a wedding clothes represents the righteous acts of the saints. Represents your sins been forgiven. Represents that your sins have been wiped out through faith in Jesus Christ. Well this man did not have wedding clothes meaning his sin remained. He could not participate in the marriage of the lamb or he cannot participate in the banquet because he did not belong to jesus christ so what happens to people whose clothes are not changed and here clothes it symbolizes your your state inside are you still sinful or are you completely righteous so that's what the clothes here represents it represents your spiritual condition so what happened was this man here was not found changed did not put his faith in Jesus Christ, and then he was thrown into hell. So that's the seriousness of believing in Jesus Christ, being ready, because you want to participate in the marriage of the Lamb. You want to participate in the banquet, because there Jesus will serve everyone. You will have such a great time with all believers. You will have a great meal, knowing that you will live forever that you will live with Jesus Christ forever. There will be angels there, all types of angels. You will see all the angels. And top of that, Jesus will create a new heaven and a new earth, and we will live in this new earth. And in this new earth, the Father and the Son will be its light. They will be in the earth, and we will live 
with the Father and the Son in the earth and with angels. And then a new city will be created in heaven and will come down to this new earth called the New Jerusalem. And we will be with the Lord for all eternity. And the material that's in this building is literally gold, precious stones, and jewels. The building's material is created in heaven. It's not earthly, but from heaven. And it's going to come down to the new earth. And we will be there with everyone. Everyone that God has created who is faithful to him will be in this new earth. And we will be always with the Lord, rejoicing and being glad. So in Matthew chapter 8, we're going to start reading in verse 10. And then look what it says. It says, when Jesus heard this, he marveled and said to those following him, truly I tell you, I have not found anyone in Israel with such great faith. He's talking there about the centurion. I say to you that many will come from the east and the west to share the banquet with Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob in the kingdom of heaven. But the sons of the kingdom will be thrown into the outer darkness where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. So we see here the reference to many will come from the east and west is in reference to Gentiles. Many Gentiles will come to faith and will sit down with Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob and with other great men of faith in the Old Testament. But the sons of the kingdom is in reference to the Israelites, the Jewish people in Jesus' time that rejected him. And not only them, but Jews today who refuse to acknowledge that Jesus is their Messiah. They will not make it into the kingdom of heaven because it's not your descent that will get you to heaven. If you are a Jew, just because you come from the seed of Abraham does not guarantee you heaven. What guarantees you heaven is someone paying for your sins. Someone has to pay for your sins. If your sins is not paid for, if your sins is not dealt with, you cannot enter into the kingdom of God. That's when the Old Testament, you see the institution of animals that you will have to bring an animal to the priest. Put your hands on the head of the animal and symbolically speaking, your sins will go on, on the animal and then the animal will die in your place. Well, that was a symbolism of what the Messiah was going to do. The Messiah was going to die on the cross for our sins so that when you put your faith in Jesus Christ, all your sins goes on Jesus. It died with Jesus on the cross. And then when Jesus resurrected, there's a picture that now you are going to follow suit that when you die, you're not going to stay dead. Because the one who you place your faith in is alive and is sitting down at the right hand of God. And when you die, you're going to open up your eyes and you're going to be in heaven with the Son and with the Father. Why? Because Jesus is our promise. Everything that happened to Jesus is going to happen to us. In the sense that Jesus died, he resurrected, and he's in heaven. We're one day we're going to die, we're going to resurrect, and we're going to be with Christ in heaven. We will always be safe. Jesus is a picture of how to live. Jesus is a picture of what we must do according to the scriptures. Everything written in the scriptures shows us and teaches us how we ought to live. So then Jesus is our model. So however he lived according to the scriptures, we must follow suit. We have to copy Jesus Christ. But guess what? If you truly have the Holy Spirit, you're not left alone. The Holy Spirit will help you, will enable you, strengthen you to live out for Jesus, to live out like Christ, to follow Christ, to accomplish His will, and to glorify Him. So what is the wedding banquet? The wedding banquet is where it's a big celebration that we will always be with Jesus and never, ever leave Him. He will never abandon us. We will never be separated from Christ. And we will be forever with Jesus Christ in heaven. Thank you for listening.